hello students this is anjana from computer science department in the previous classes we discussed a few of the topics in this to in this concepts domains and interfaces testing so uh, now uh, let's uh, continue this topic so now let us discuss about this uh, procedure for testing so uh, before going to testing what is the procedure that we are going to follow for testing the domains okay uh, see here uh, basically the procedure is a conceptually is a straight forward and here um, suppose if you are uh, if you are going to do the part, testing conceptually it should be a straight forward testing and it can be done by the hand for two dimensions and only for the few domains uh, practically uh, sometimes it may be practically impossible that if it is having more than two variables such that uh, suppose if it is if uh, if our domain is having one variable then it is not that much harder task for it to perform the testing but uh, if it is a not a uh, Uh, if it is having more than one variable, uh, then for a uh, for uh, for testing, it is uh, it will become some hard. It will, it will be a some hard situation. Uh, then here uh, the procedure is conceptually uh, it is a straight forward. It can be done uh, by the hand for the two dimensions and for the few domains, and it is practically impossible for more than two variables. So. if it is more than two variables sometimes it is practical practically it is not possible it is impossible so uh, first of all uh, what is the procedure that you have to follow is first of all you have to identify the input variable suppose uh, whether it is a, a character integer float double whatever the type of the uh, integer so sorry what is the, whatever the type of the input you are giving so Uh, first of all you have to identify the uh, input variables what are the input variables that are we giving we have to identify the input variables next one you have to identify the variable uh, which appear in domain uh, defining predicate such as control flow predicates suppose um first of all you have to identify the variable what are the what are the uh, variable uh, is there you have to identify whether uh, what is the type of the variable so uh, if that variable is appear in the domain uh, which is defining the predicates such as uh, uh, if it is a control flow predicate that is the, it is a control flow predicate if if you are using the control statements just like that in that case if you find a variable uh, at that case also you have to identify the variable next one interpret all the domain predicates in terms of input variables so uh, if any uh, domain predicate is having some input variables uh, you have to first interpret that variable okay next one uh, for uh, p binary predicates b p binary predicates means we don't know how many binary predicates that we have used for that uh, language uh, suppose it if it is having a p p binary predicates uh, so uh, uh, suppose if it is uh, in, for our coding it is having 10 binary predicates so at most we are, at most uh, uh, 2 power 10 combinations of true or false values uh, you have to occur okay based upon the Uh, binary predicates uh, based upon the logic uh, we will having the binary predicates so for a programming if it is having p binary predicates uh, that are at most 2 power p combinations of either it is a true or false values and therefore at most 2 power p domains so if from this we can find the set of all non null domains then the result is a boolean expression in the predicates consisting a set of n terms and it is joined by the ors for example uh, a b c uh, that is a a and b and c uh, plus plus means or so uh, a a b c or d e f or g h i just like that you have to uh, perform that operation so 
uh, where the capital letters denote the predicates so uh, each and every predicate is uh, denoted by the capital letter itself so each product term is similar to the linear inequality uh, that defines a domain or a part of a multiply connected domains so uh, if in order to solve that such inequalities uh, to find all those extreme points uh, for each domain uh, for each and every domain to solve this each and every domain having some inequalities so in order to solve that particular inequalities we have to find all the extreme points of each and every domain uh, using any linear programming methods we are having so many programming codes either by using the c c++ uh, uh, or uh, oops concepts or uh, whatever the concepts that we are using in our programming by using that programming methods we can solve these inequalities to find all the extreme points of each domain okay next so uh, now let us see about the domain and interface testing so if we have taken the introduction related to the domain and interface testing so we can recall that we define the integration testing we have already uh, discussed about the integration testing um, so uh, as the testing that uh, correctness the interface between uh, between the two otherwise the correct components so in any two components if we are going to perform the testing so uh, we can say it as a interface uh, we are testing the correctness of the interface between the two otherwise the correct components suppose if you are having the components a and b they have been demonstrated to satisfy their components test uh, so as a part of the act of integrating um, integrating them we want to investigate the possible inconsistencies across their in interface suppose uh, the interface between any two components whatever the components the interface between any two components is considered as a subroutine call uh, then we have to we should we need not to consider it as a component why because uh, in the testing each and every uh, task will be considered as a component suppose uh, if one is uh, considered as a component a and another one is comp uh, considered as a component b just like that suppose if you are having these two components a and b uh, a and b have been demonstrated uh, to satisfy their component test so and as a part of act of integrating them we want to investigate the possible inconsistencies across their interface so uh, the interface between any two components is considered as a uh, subroutine call so uh, if you are looking for the bugs in that uh, suppose if a bug is arises in that component then by using the call uh, when we do the interface testing so uh, if we assume that the call sequence is correct and that are no type of incompatibilities so each and every call sequence if you are going to check the each and every call sequence it is correct and that are uh, that there are no type of incompatibilities so for uh, if it is a single variable or double variable for a single variable the domain span is a set of numbers between uh, and including the smallest value and the largest value for every input variable uh, we want uh, the compatible domain spans and the compatible closures uh, so uh, based upon the compatibility also we need to investigate that uh, whether these components have been demonstrated to satisfy the component test or not so in 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 interface if you are having the interface between two components it is considered it should be it should be considered as a subroutine call so uh, from this we can say that from this we can say that we are looking for a uh, we are looking uh, we are uh, we are looking for a uh, better uh, better better component for a uh, demonstrate for demonstrating the single variable or the domain span okay so if you observe this range domains and range uh, so the set of output values produced by the function whatever the output values that are produced by the function we can say it as a range 
so uh, we can say it as a range of the function so in const in contrast with the domain which is a set of input values over which the function is defined so for most testing our aim has been to satisfy the input variables and uh, to predict the and or or confirm the output values that result from those inputs so the here the interface testing requires that we select the output values of the calling routine uh, that is caller's range must be a uh, compatible with the routine's domain so uh, so if it is having some uh, domain like this so the interface test consists of the exploring the correctness of the following mapping so if you have observed this uh, it is a caller domain to caller range we can consider it as a caller unit test okay next one if it is from caller range to domain we can consider it as a integration test so if it is from caller domain to caller range then we can say it as a caller unit test okay so based upon these categories also we are going to consider whether it is set of output values are produced by a function is called the range or of the function in contrast with the domain which is a set of input values over which the function is defined so for the most testing our aim is to satisfy the input variables and to predict the end or or confirm the output variables result from those inputs so the interface testing requires that we should uh, we, we select the output values of the calling routine uh, that is the caller's range must be compatible with the routine's domain so an interface test consists of the exploring the correctness of the following mapping so you have already seen this if it is a caller domain it is a caller domain we can say it as a caller unit test and it is a caller range to caller domain we can say it as a integration test and it is a caller domain to caller range we can say it as a caller unit test okay so if we have observed this closures compatibility uh, assume that the callers whatever the whoever the caller uh, the caller range and the caller domain spans the same numbers for example uh if you have taken from 0 to 17 if you have observed this figure we can uh, define the range like this that is from 0 to 17 okay so uh, see uh, this uh, this figure shows the four ways in which the caller's range closer and the called domain's closure can agree so these are the open tops so if it is open top uh, the top is uh, uh, focused like this here it is a open bottoms the bottom is represented like this so if both are open uh, then it will be represented like this okay here uh, in this uh, in this one uh, we can define the range from uh, 0 to 17 and next uh, it is for open tops and this is for open bottoms and here the both are open so if you assume the caller range uh, it and the caller domain spans the same numbers for example from 0 to 17 here uh, uh, the figure also the 4.16 figure shows also four ways in which the caller range closure and the caller domain closure can agree so um, the caller domain closure can agree the thick line whatever the thick line uh, we can say it as a closed if it is a thin line it is a open so it is a, like here it is a thick line so it is a closed here we are having some thin line so it is a open here that is top side open so uh, so top side thin line so this is a top side open so we can say it as a open top here bottom side we are having a thin line so bottom side open so we can say it as a open bottom here both at the top and bottom we are having the uh, thin line so we can say it as a uh, both open so uh, from this uh, uh, the, this figure shows that the four cases considering the domains that are closed both on the top and bottom and open the uh, top and closed bottom closed top and open bottom and open top and the uh, open bottom just like that uh, we have uh, shown uh, seen the four different uh, closure compatibility in this figure uh, so yeah 
please wait it is taking some time to come i think okay so if you have observed this figure also uh, here uh, equal span range about the equal span range about the domain compatibility but so it shows the 12 different ways that uh, the caller and the call, uh, that the caller and the caller can disagree about the closure so uh, not all of them are the necessary bugs uh, the four cases in which a caller boundary is open uh, and it is called as a closed and marked with a question mark or probably it is not a buggy so it means that the caller will not supply such a values uh, but it can be called to accept them so if you have uh, uh, this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 uh, 10 11 12 these are the 12 different ways so it is having equal span range about the domain compatibility bugs so this figure shows that 12 different ways that the caller and call uh, called this one is call, considered as a call and called so these are these will be disagreed about the closure so not all of them are necessary bugs so here mainly all of we can say that all are necessary bugs so sometimes not all of them are also necessary bugs so in this four cases in which uh, the caller boundary is open and it is uh, and and the caller is closed so and it is mark if it is closed uh, uh, it should be marked with the question mark so uh, it is probably not a buggy so it means that the caller will not supply such values but the caller can accept them so if you have observed that here this is the first way to equal span range and domain compat if you observe this domain compatibility box these are the 12 different ways to represent see here both uh, here both sides thick uh, here one side thick and one side thin here these two both sides thick here these two both sides thin so if you observe these here two both sides thick here also thick here thin so here here only thick and the remaining three places are thin places so here uh, the diagonally uh, whatever the diagonally opposite to each other those are only thin uh, so thick and uh, these one are uh, thin here these two are thick these two are thin here top two one is thin this one is thin and this one is thick here this one is only thin and remaining three are thick and this one this one this one this one are thin and this one only thick here these three are thin this one this one and this one are thin here this one is thick so it can be represented with a question mark why it is represented at a question mark the caller boundary is open and it is called as a closed okay so here also uh, it is not we can say that it is whether closed or open okay so here this one is uh, open uh, this one is thin this one is thin and these two are thick so this one also will be placed with a question mark okay so if it is uh, in span compatibility uh, this figure shows the three possibly harmless span incompatibilities see this is this domain domain range is from 3 to 7 here this is 129 okay if it is from 3 to 9 we can represent like this this is from 1 to 9 so e uh, here both are having equal end okay here this is here e here it is having uh, equal end at the top here it, it is having the equal end at the bottom this is 1 to 7 and 1 to 9 so these are the three possibility harmful less span incompatibilities so here in case of the caller's range it is a subset of the call's domain and that's not necessarily a bug we can uh, we can say that that may be a bug that, that necessarily it may not be a bug so uh, whatever the routine the routine used by sometimes the routine may be used by the many callers so uh, some required values what are the required values that presented inside uh, a range and some don't so uh, this kind of span incompatibility is a bug only if uh, if the caller expects the call routine to validate the call number of the caller 
so this is a kind of span impairability uh, and it, uh, it if the caller experts the call routine to validate the caller number for the caller so uh, in this figure shows the opposite situation in which the caller routine domain has a smaller span than the called caller experts all of the examples are buggy so if all these examples are buggy then what uh, we are going to do is uh, so uh, this is uh, like this 129 and 327 here this is 129 and 329 here it is at the open uh, it is at the same end here at the close it is at the same end so these are the called then uh, called similar then caller so if the if these domains is mismatch 1 2 7 3 2 9 if it is having mismatch like this that is 3 2 9 1 2 7 1 2 we are going to represent like this is 1 2 9 so up 1 2 3 5 2 9 we can write like this okay next one if it is 1 2 9 1 2 3 um in middle we feel left uh, if it is not needed we can left that is holes in the call domain we can say it as a holes in the call domain and next uh, if it is not used we are going to leave that and up to 6 to 8 we are using here also we are leaving that and next one this is 1 to 9 up to 7 you used from 7 to 9 also we re reused it again so in the figure 4.19 ranges from domains uh, that do not lie up hence the good values are always rejected uh, so uh, good values are always rejected and bad values are always accepted and if the call routine isn't a robust enough we have the crashes so uh this figure combines the two these notations to show the various ways that we can have the holes in the domain uh, so these are always probably a buggy okay so if you uh, observe this interface range and domain compatibility testing for interface testing the bugs are more likely to concern single variables rather than the peculiar combinations of two or more variables so we, we have to test every input variable independently of other input variables to confirm the compatibility of caller's range and the caller routine's domain span and the closure of every domain defined for that variable so there are two boundaries to test its one dimensional domain so that uh, it requires one of the one off point for the boundary so are a total two on points and two off points for the domain so uh, we can say it as pick off domains appropriate to the closure so we can start with the caller domains uh, caller routine domains and generate the test points in accordance to the domain testing strategy used for the routine in the component testing so unless you are the mathematical with which want to be able to or do without tools for more than one variable at a time if you want to do the one variable at a time we can do the we can easily perform the mathematical calculations at the one variable at a time okay up to here uh, we have finished the third unit then in the next class we will continue with the uh, fourth unit okay